I feel like I'm speaking to another Englishman from Perth. You are indeed. How are you, Frank? It's short. Uh, I'm very well. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm a Kent boy originally, down from Deal on the southeast uh, of the coast. You know, I I very near. You know what, for, man? The, this picture behind me here is a picture of the Deal coastline. Oh wow, my hometown. Yeah, yeah. I very nearly moved there a couple of years ago. Ended beautiful. up in Essex instead. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Part beautiful. Of well, it's not far for you to go and visit because <laughs> by the sound of the name of the tour. You are literally going everywhere and anywhere that will happen. You. <laughs> yeah, I mean that. Well, that, that's a that's a that's been my sort of like basic career approach. It's worth saying the name of the tour. So it's been around for a while. In two thousand and seven, I did my first album tour, and we called it the Sleepers for the Week tour. And we printed way too many tour posters. And at the end of the tour, we just had all these posters with the Sleepers for the Week tour in them. My manager was just like, "Well, what are we going to do with these?" And I said, "Don't worry. Next time, I'll come up with a tour name that's like universally applicable." Um, and so the never ending tour of everywhere, you know, it doesn't have a date and it doesn't have a place on it and happy days. And and judging by the dates I've seen flying around all over social media, you are literally going everywhere. It's been an incredible run of shows. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I I, I have a pretty kind of magpie-ish um, view of, you know, people say, where do you want to play? And the answer is anywhere I haven't played. Um, uh, and I have my white whales. I've never been to South America. I'm working on that. Um, I'm going to be playing a show in Singapore pretty soon, which I'm really excited about and I've been there. So, you know, there's, it's, I, I, I would love to go over it. Of course, social media being what it is, people do let me know where I'm not going um, loudly and repeatedly and vociferously and in volume. Well, what's lovely is that, uh, as you know, Australia is such a huge country. Perth does occasionally miss out on these wonderful tours. Yes. But we certainly just don't miss out with you coming. We've got you at the Astor, oh, the Astor Theatre, which is a wonderful venue. Um, so thank you for fitting us into a hectic month of November. Yeah, um, I'm excited. We've always had a good time in Perth. Actually, I used to be in a band called Million Dead many years ago, and our guitar player was from Perth. So, um, and at the time, um, Australia conceptually was pretty theoretical to me. But uh, he was he was always telling me it's the most remote Western city in the world, or something like this. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So I've always been always had a bit of a kind of conceptual spot, soft spot for Perth. Oh, fantastic. Well, of course, nine solo albums now. Does it get increasingly harder to put a set list together now? Uh, yes, is the short answer to that. I mean, I have a, I, I'm pretty, um, the only play, place in life where you might describe me as a populist is in my set list choices. You know, I like to kind of keep everybody happy, um, and play a bit of everything. And keeping everybody happy includes me as well. So there's a thing in writing like this, you, you lead and you follow. You, the, the follow bit is where you play the hits that everyone wants to sing along to, and the lead bit is where you play some stuff that people might not know, and you say, well, listen to this, uh, you know, which might be newer songs or it might be deep cuts or whatever it might be. But it, but you're right. I mean, I have way too many songs for one set list at this point in my life um, and trying to figure out which ones to play and which ones me and everyone in the band can remember how to play um, <clears throat> is, a, is a daily uh, struggle. I mean, I spend so much of my life thinking about set lists. It's actually tedious. Oh, really? And of course, you just I just seen about six days ago, you're going to make that choice even harder. Uh, album number 10 is all uh, finished, mixed and ready to go. It's in the can, yes. I mean, we might play one, maybe two new songs on the on the tour because I'm excited about it. That said, I mean, this being album number 10, I'm now used to the fact that you finish a record and you then have to wait quite a long time for it to come out because of vinyl lead times and promo and all that sort of business. But I'm, I'm really stoked about the record. I think it is... Um, strong and uh i'm excited for people to hear it as and when that said i mean this is technically the, the tour next month is the uh, is the fthc tour so we will be playing material from that record as well of course and what a wonderful record that was with so Thank much you. material do you find it uh easy to write are you are you a, a consummate writer or do you have to sit <clears> down and nail, nail down some time to write um, it changes over time. I mean, I'm quite keen on the idea of not repeating myself. Um, whether or not I'm successful in that is for other people to judge. But like, you know, I don't want to, a lot of people are like, you know, for instance, my favourite song, when, you know, why don't you write another one like that? And it's like, because I've already written that one and it's in the set list and, uh, you know, we're going to play it. Um, but I don't need to then have another song that sounds the same that goes immediately after it. That would be a waste of everybody's time. Um, so, you know, uh, in I guess what I would say is that, like, you know, songwriting is part art and part craft. It's part inspiration. It's part perspiration. All the cliches. And, and sort of coming up with kind of new furrows to plough and new things to talk about takes longer now that I'm this far into my career. But once I start 
getting an idea together it's an easier process to get from there to something to the sound that's in my head because my the 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 technical skills the craft part of a songwriter are much better uh, much more developed muscles should we say at this point so um you know but i mean in in the old days i used to just sort of um write on the fly and sort of lie around in a toga and let ideas come to me and all this sort of <laughs> nonsense <laughs> but these days i do sort of like it i do it is a bit more like i'm like hmm i need to kind of like get some of these snippets that i have hanging around into song form and i'll sit down and do that in a concentrated period yeah well um i, <clears> I had a, a bit of your back catalog on random today so and there, there was quite a change with the latest album there is some real quite gritty heavier stuff in there as well which is i was driving yeah. up the freeway and it really gripped me some of that it's fantastic good excellent job done um i i mean like i mean basically um the the new record was there's a, there's a degree there's a sense of kind of return to it in a sense like a lot of the music i've made over the years has been punk adjacent you know punk rock with an adjective attached to it of some kind or you know i mean in some cases it was pretty far away from punk and that's fine but um in 2019 i did a bunch of shows with no effects um we did a which was great they're old friends and we ended up agreeing to do a split with each other and that came out in 2020 and and all of that i, I basically spent a bit of time sort of being in more in the center of like the the punk world and it felt great i felt really good about it um i felt i felt kind of felt like i'd come home um in a way and it was just like oh but i could make a record that kind of fits with this feeling. Do you know what I mean? Let's give that a try. And that's what became FTHC. Um, and and I enjoyed the experience so much that I would describe the new one that's finished as a punk record as well. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to be there front and centre because I've still not seen you live yet. I'll be heading oh, to really? the merch desk. Yeah, I'm going to head <clears> to the merch desk to uh, purchase some back catalogue material for my collection. Um, so hopefully Lovely. you'll be bringing some, some music with you. Um, just before I lose you, because I know we've got a short interview time, I just wanted to ask you a couple of generic ones. Um, if Please. I could uh, invite you to a restaurant and you could have three musicians, dead or alive, join you for a bit of dinner, oh, Lord. who would you have sitting uh, with? That's a really tough question. Um, I think I would choose Nick Cave would be top of my list. Uh, I, I've met him very briefly once and sort of made a bit of a tit out of myself and I'd like to try and restitute that. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think I'd choose Regina Spector as one of them. I think she's one of the most remarkable songwriters of the 21st century. I just think that what she does with song structure is completely bizarre. Uh, and I would like to pick her brains about that. And then, um, uh, ooh, I mean, there's a part of me that wants to say someone like Chuck Berry. Do you know what I mean? I think Chuck Berry would probably have some pretty wild stories to tell. Um, uh, I, it's difficult to judge how great a conversational partner he would be for somebody he didn't know, but I think that he'd be an interesting person to, to grill. There we go, Frank. It wasn't that hard. Look at you. You breezed through that one. <laughs> well, what, in the musical time of playlists that we all get sucked into, um, what was the last album you listened to? Uh, the last album I listened to, and I, the thing is, you say that about playlists, I'm pretty old fashioned. I like albums. I like to sit down, put time aside and listen to an album. The last album I listened to in full, which I listened to for about the 10th time in a row, was the uh, new Cannibal Corpse album, Chaos Horrific. Um, I'm a really big metal, extreme metal and extreme music generally fan. Um, not that much of that comes out in the music I make myself, but I still enjoy it. And um, I love Cannibal Corpse. And I was really excited when they had a new record. And what I love about it is that they haven't changed anything at all. It's just Cannibal Corpse again. And that's exactly what I wanted from that record. And it was great. Fantastic. Well, I was, I was interested to read you touch on that, that one of the first albums you bought was Iron Maiden's Killers, which, uh, you know, some say and that's another debate for another day. The Diano years were sometimes ranked as the best, but there we go. Well, <laughs> we're going to have to schedule another interview to have that conversation in depth because I have I have opinions, but um, I love I do I have the artwork for that record tattooed on my leg. Oh wow, fantastic! <clears throat> well, they just yeah. announced an Australian tour for next year, which is great. Um, finally, Lovely. the easiest question of all, Frank: If you could be credited with any song ever written, what song would you choose? <laughs> That's not the easiest question. That's the hardest question. Um, you should have moved to uh, deal. I mean, you know, you have breezed it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, I mean, the thing is, like, I mean, um, you know, what you could be kind of cynical about this and say, you know, hey jude or something because the the publishing royalties would keep you in house and home for a very long time um but <laughs> i'm not sure oh, that's quite unless the spirit. michael jackson buys them 
<laughs> well, yeah, quite. I'm not sure that's quite the spirit of the question, though. Um, I mean, uh, there are so many great songs that I love. I mean, off the top of my head, I'm going to say Bat out, "Bat out of Hell" by Meatloaf because I bloody love that song, um, and and it's a long song as well. I once got physically ejected from a karaoke bar in New York uh, because I was singing along with that song, and it turned out that they were playing the abridged version, which is only five minutes long, and I started complaining about this into the microphone. I was very drunk. Um, <laughs> using, you know what I mean here, using words that are swear words in England and in America, but are harder in America than they are in England. Let's say I that. Know the Do you know what I mean? Yes. yes, and uh, so I was physically removed from the stage by security and thrown onto the street. <laughs> and then you came back with an encore of Shine On You Crazy Diamond by Pink Floyd. <laughs> no, no, I did. This is put, the true part of the story. I had to go back the next day and get my credit card, which I left <laughs> behind the bar. <laughs> well, that's a wonderful way to end the interview. Um, Frank, we wish you a safe journey over here. We look forward to catching up with you here. We'll be at the show to uh, to review and shoot awesome. and uh, and enjoy your music. Lovely. Lovely. I'm looking forward to seeing you there, man. It's going to be a great time. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. Easy, man. Cheers, mate.